What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Um, I'm going to introduce today's guest in a second, Owen of Sweet Process. Before I do, I like always like to Owen point out other episodes. You have an amazing podcast, right? The Process Breakdown Podcast. I always tell people on that podcast to check out, um, there's a Michael Gerber interview, there's a David Allen interview, there's uh, Cameron Harold interview. There's so many good interviews. I had Cameron Harold. That's another you know, a good one on mine as well. And, um, you know, he has the COO Alliance. So check it out. He's got, he has some amazing books that he has written and check those out and many more mm-hmm. on inspiredinsider.com. Um, before I introduce Owen, this episode is brought to you by Rise25. Um, people say, Owen, what do you do, Rise25? Well, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships. Um, and we do that by helping you run your podcast. As you know, Owen, I mean, you've known, we've known each other for many years. The number one thing in my life is relationships. I am always looking at a way to give to my best relationships. Over the past decade, I've seen no better way to do that than have them on my podcast, profile what they're working on, talk about the things I admire about them and that other people should too, and you know, shout what they have from the rooftops. And Lucky so, me. <laughs> yeah, and that, I love, I mean, I've been saying this for years and years and years. I think everyone, if you have a business, you should have a podcast, period. Um, so if you have questions about it, you can go to rise25.com. I have said this over and over, Owen. So here's how I introduce sweet process to people. Okay. I say, have you had team members ask you the same questions over and over again? And you may have spent 10 times explaining it and you want to slam your head against the wall, potentially. Well, guess what, Owen? There's a better way, okay? <laughs> There's it feels a solution. Weird. I, I'm on the other side now listening to you There's introducing a, ex- our software. Exactly. <laughs> There's go a ahead, solution. There's a solution. It's called yeah. Sweet Process. I don't know if you've heard of it, okay? Sweet Process is actually a software that makes it drop dead easy to train and onboard new staff and save time with the existing staff. I've talked to many people who actually use Sweet Process, Owen, and you know this, that they're like, this is, they repeat, they say, it makes it so easy for me to train people before it took, I don't know, months. Now Mm -hmm. I basically send them an email and it walks it through, that's through the whole process. I can onboard new staff. You know, it just, it it holds people accountable to doing things right. Um, Not only do universities, banks and hospitals and software companies use you, but first responder government agencies use you in life or death situation. I've talked to some of these government agencies before yeah. and they had some amazing stories to tell. So if you, you know, I was talking to someone earlier today Oh, and my friend, Dr. Scott Gray. Hey, shout out to Dr. Scott Gray. He was like, Jeremy, I feel like my, you know, we could be more organized. I'm like, have you heard of sweet process? Sweet process can document all the repetitive tasks that eat up your precious time. So you focus on growing your team and they do have a free trial. You can test it out. Listen, their software for the amount of time it saves and energy it saves is inexpensive. Okay. Inexpensive. Um, and so, but you can get a free trial. You can test it out. 14 day free trial. No credit card is required. You can go to sweetprocess.com. You know, sweet like candy, S W E E T process.com. Owen. Yes. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad to be here. So I, I want to talk about the journey of starting Sweet Process. I really want to start there. And we have kind of this overlap of worlds in this journey. So mm-hmm. talk about starting Sweet Process. So to get some real context as to how we even started Sweet Process, I'll go like, you know, a couple of years back before Sweet Process, I used to run a uh, uh, so some people call it an outsourcing uh, firm where, you know, I would provide entrepreneurs here in the U.S. with, you know, staff who would, uh, you know, do their back office work, you know, uh, and, you know, and this was like in the heyday of after people just read the four hour work week. So immediately they would just think, you know, they you know, find somebody abroad just and the person would just uh, get started doing their work and everything just goes like magic. And, you know, but the reality is, you know, you and I both know is that it doesn't work like that. There is some form of 
onboarding that needs to be, you know, uh, to happen. Whether the person is being hired here in the States or even abroad, you have to have uh, some form of documentation of how work is done so that, you know, they can hit the ground running. And back then, there were no tools. Sweet process was not even in, in existence. There were enterprise level tools out there that, you know, I tried to work with my, my agency to try to, you know, uh, document uh, how work was done at the you know, say we have a new client before we onboard them as a client, we have to document how they do their work so that my team could take over their work and do it, you know, properly for them. There was a lot of enterprise. Like every that- project is unique. I mean, that's a tough nut to crack because you have so many staff that are all doing different projects. It's not like uh, you're yeah. in a company I mean, you could streamline. You need like the ultimate streamline in that situation. And, and the, the problem was the tools were, you know, at an enterprise level and hard to use. And so even the person who you're trying to get to do the work can't even figure out how to use the tool because it's just complicated. Or I was, you know, hacking together a bunch of different tools together that were not even built for the purpose. And I, in my mind, I was like, you know, there has to be an easy way to do this stuff. And so lo and behold, you know, while still promoting the business and trying to, you know, getting more customers and all that, I think uh, Andrew Warner of Mixergy, uh, obviously, you know, Andrew Warner, mm-hmm. uh, invited me to come on there to do a, uh, not not an actual interview, but an actual course, because he has two versions. A master class. Yeah, master class. Yeah. And so- I still think, Owen, we came up with the term, Andrew and I came up with the term master class before. Now, there's masterclass.com. <laughs> Remember, I mean, we were calling it masterclass. Oh, yeah. You know that. Yeah. Like, whatever it was, eight years ago. Yeah. And, and now it's a, it's a whole thing. And yeah. so I went, and the, the, basically, the masterclass or the course is basically you come on there, and it's not necessarily you're talking about your history or your journey as an entrepreneur, but you're coming to take a, you're teaching. A, a specific topic and going deep into it. And so I was brought on there to talk about how you know entrepreneurs can systematize their operations and how to do that by documenting how work is done so that by the time you hand over work to somebody the person knows the way the work should be done and so that's what i i went on there you know nervous as heck you know you know going on the interview like this is andrew water were you listening to the podcast at the time oh yeah i I think i don't think i've missed any episode of andrew Warner's. wow i've listened to amazing from the very beginning but anyways so I was there nervous as heck, but, you know, I did what I had to do. And lo and behold, my co-founder now at Sweet Process, Jervis, uh, reached out to me and was like, uh, you know, he has this idea that, you know, he's uh, he's thinking of, you know, uh, working on. And essentially, you know, it's in line with, you know, help, helping entrepreneurs and companies uh, find an easy way to document how work is done. And he liked what I was talking about on the... So on he the, heard you on Mixergy? Yeah, he heard me on the Mixergy wow. course. He reached out Does to Andrew me. know that, that you guys met each other? Before? I think he knows, but I mean, I, I don't usually make it a thing other than when huh. people ask me, but I, that's how we met. And so he reached out to me and then I, you know, uh, had a conversation with him and I was like, dude, uh, instead of just asking me for advice on how to build this stuff, this is something that I know, you know, based on what I'm doing, that, you know, it's a necessary thing. Why don't we just build it together? And so lo and behold, you know, we just went ahead to uh, build three process together. And this was the uh, fourth quarter of uh, 2013. And so before we went ahead to start, you know, I mean, he's the CTO. Before I started you know, writing any code or anything, I said, let us go ahead and, you know, uh, talk to customers, potential customers to see, you know, uh, what exactly uh, are the problems they have when it comes to employees not having the information handy in front of them of how work is done, uh, what tools are they used before and what challenges they run into with tools because we didn't want to just go and st- start writing code even though I had this you know uh, deep uh, experience seeing the problem myself firsthand but I felt like you know it's better to you know get other people interviewed just to see what people are saying then we can come together with all the different problems we see uh, around this topic and figure out okay uh, where are we going to focus and uh, build the software so that it, we can make it easy and intuitive to use because that's one of the issues we had uh, I had was all these other enterprise tools were you know crazy and hard to use and so we did that for like what maybe a month to about 45 days of just making calls I, I remember I was on calls with different people say hey, I'm not trying to sell you on anything I'm just you know based on your, your type of company I feel like you know this will be something that uh, you have a need for but you know tell me what kind of problems you have with regards to you know employees not knowing what they need to do and how you're solving that and that kind of conversation you know 
trying to understand the pain. And I gathered all that information back, recorded some of the conversations, shared the uh, summaries of all the calls with Jervis. And then we decided, okay, this is what our software needs to do. This is mm. how we can make it easy, how we can make it intuitive. And from there we launched and the rest is history. And uh, I mean, you're on our website, right? This is awesome. Uh, I can see the screenshot of, uh, uh, so you can click on uh, the happy customers. We have you know, tons of videos on there showing different customers from different industries using our software. And you know, you actually the one that handles the case studies. So you know about this. Uh, we have a lot of case studies, interviews with uh, entrepreneurs yeah. all the way from- uh, There's some amazing stories here. To lawyers, yeah. to, uh, uh, I mean, I mean, it, it runs the gamut because the problem of making employees know how work is done, it's, it's industry agnostic, meaning that every industry, I mean, we will have churches <laughs> using our, our software because, you know, they want to make sure that volunteers do work, uh, you know, serve their uh, congregation the way they, uh, it should be served. So when you need to, you know, outline how, you know, the experience of the work should be done, Sweet Process is the answer. So that's a quick uh, history of how we yeah. get started. It's amazing, right? And yeah. so I pulled up the mixer. Here it is. Here's your outsourcing effectively. Oh, wow. Look at that. Of course. <laughs> look at this. You see that? That's the history right there. Look at my uh, old school picture. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't changed. Oh, you haven't yeah. Really changed. You yeah, just have glasses awesome, now. Yeah. Oh, I've been using glasses even back then. I just took off my glasses and took a picture for that. What one. it gives me an idea for you, actually, every time I talk to you, I feel like I get a new idea, by the way, for you, which is like, there should be a course on your page. There mm. should be an actual course on your page. Like from this, we're going to produce a course for mm. you and an outsourcing effectively course, right? Why not? Uh, that would be great. People can sign up. They can get you know, get that founders and CEOs and all of them will like that. And obviously they could check out Mixergy as well. I have and, a, and you know, something too, yeah, is that like, ahead. even when based on my own, and this is the importance of actually interviewing potential customers, based on my own experience, I thought that the people that would need this software were people who were trying to outsource stuff because that was the industry I was in. But to be honest, we don't even have that many people who are using our software to outsource anything. It's more of mm -hmm. an internal thing. Yeah. You know, companies with more than 20 employees yeah. all the way to a thousand employees using the software yeah. internally. We're going uh, to change it. It's yeah. called InSource Effectively. <laughs> That's the name of the course. Okay. In, because everyone talks about outsourcing. Let's talk about insourcing. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. I don't know. That's my idea. You'll see if you're listening to this episode, Maybe one day you'll get a course. Maybe we'll give you a discount code. Who yeah, knows? This is live for, for insourcing effectively. I, I don't know. You should coin that term. We just coined it right here. Has anyone, <laughs> did anyone talk about insourcing? I, I think insourcing is actually a word. Is it, I'm sure it is. <laughs> it's like entrepreneur and intrapreneur, right? I thought yeah. we just created something new on the fly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, you know, that, that's really cool. I love it. And so, you know, one of the things that the feedback when I talk to your your customers or people who use you, um, the, what sticks out besides the, the easiness is the responsiveness. People who want new features or they want somebody to do something, like I just message them and it doesn't happen all the time, but they were very responsive. They actually incorporated my changes into future updates. I'm wondering what's your process uh, look like for how do you decide what features you're going to work on because there's a lot of things you have to work on and, and, and how do you get that done i have to thank uh jervis because i've learned a lot of things from you know how to build software from my co-founder jervis and his whole thing is all about uh version 1.0 how simple can we be that you know we have this vision of what we're trying to be we're like miles ahead of like, what's we process what we want to be with three process the, the vision is way over there, but like we're going to get there eventually. But for this feature, what's the simplest version that we can release that gets the customer uh, solving the problem, the root problem that mm -hmm. they're actually trying to solve? And so from there is where we, you know, determine what that, you know, minimum viable version of the uh, feature will be. And then we begin to iterate and improve based on feedback we get from them. And that's why we're so eager to get our customers talking to us because when you do it this way, you don't just rush into building this bloated feature uh, software and this feature that 
nobody can even use or you can you 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 the one who run the company can even explain it because it's so difficult to use but when you go to this route where you go with the most skeleton easy version intuitive uh starting point then you allow your customers based on their feedback to help you improve it and and and, and it gets to a point where you just keep that simplicity but with constant improvement it gets better and better and better you know what i'm saying yeah. i want to talk about the evolution mm -hmm. of sweet process because you know, you talk to customers. I think there's no better way, better thing to do in a business actually is to talk to customers and find out and get feedback, what they like, what they don't like. What are some, uh, talk about some of the major features you implemented in Sweet Process because of the feedback. So uh, features we implemented because of, I mean, we keep, I mean, it's, it's, it's like we keep creating features every day and improving it. So it's like, it keeps pumping out, but yeah. feedback, let's see, I'm, I'm putting him on the spot here. Right Are there here. any so, big, like, I'm just um, curious, so like for any instance, big, I wouldn't yeah. say this is more a feature that uh, feedback, but like, for instance, uh, single sign-on is something where a lot of these other companies, they try to make it look like, oh, uh, just to use, use single sign-on to log into the software, uh, you got to pay us this other special price and uh, they make it look like it's enterprise uh, something that just to have it in their website. But we take the belief that, well, well, the single sign-on just to have an easier way for people to log into the software that you control and you, you can provision access and all that for, you know, using that same single sign-on uh, vendor for different software. Why should you pay extra just to use our software? It's like saying pay extra for a key to get into this uh, software, whereas the real what's the value of what you're trying to do in the software is different. So, uh, but that came from the fact that, you know, these larger companies were asking us for, you know, uh, you know, single sign-on and all that, but we say, okay, we can go ahead and do what everybody in the industry is doing and try to have different shared pricing and say, putting this on the higher price. Mm -hmm. But we said, nah, uh, that's not the core of, you know, what the feature of what we, the problem we're solving. And so, you know, we decided, you know, our pricing should be such that everybody has access to the software, all the features for the same price. And we want to charge you based on who's actually using the software. So obviously there's a base price where uh, for up to 20 employees, you know, there's that base price. So if one employee is using the software, uh, you know, you pay that base price. If 20 employees are using the software, you still pay that base yeah. price. Which we, is which is amazing. I just yeah. have to point out because we just, I'm not gonna name the software, we were like trialing. <laughs> this is nothing to do with, with processes, yeah. it's a mm -hmm. different software. And it says your free trial when it's up, you'll be charged $250 per month per user. Yeah. And I was like, regardless Whoa, of whether I only you invited, I only invited <laughs> two of other team members, but like we will yeah. start getting docs 750 a month, like with yeah. three people using it. So there's not many people, software companies are doing this where it's like, cool, $99. It's for up to 20 members. So and once you get more yeah. than 20 employees now with the competition, they say, okay, per user, there's a fee that you charge yeah. you, whether they use the software yeah. or not. We say, no, we're always trying to do things differently. We say, okay, yeah. we are going to literally look at the usage of each person you add into the software besides the initial 20 that comes with the package. And if they use the software, that's when we charge you the additional fee. And our customers love that because yeah. it's like, you know, imagine you, you're the operations director of a large firm and you're trying to, you know, totally. onboard everybody. And then now you think, oh, I'm going to be stuck with a huge bill. And They've not even started using the software. You know, with every new software that you're incorporating into a company, you know, there's that period of, you know, learning the software, onboarding, and getting people to change their ways internally. But now with this kind of pricing, you don't have to yeah. worry about that. You can add, you can add all the people in the software that yeah. you need to add and know that, you know, you're only going to get charged based on people using yeah. it. So we always look at- That's pretty amazing. I'm, I'm curious on how yeah. do you choose 20 as opposed to 10? as opposed to 21. I mean, I could see That's even, a great with, question. even with 10, I could see it being so really So I can tell you reasonable. the answer to that because yeah. we actually know the reason why we chose yeah. that. So this wasn't the pricing we started initially. So over the years, we've been increasing the pricing to a certain point, but what we, we came across was that there's a certain threshold in which uh, a company, in terms of the size of the company, that they stay our customer for 24 months or more. And they like use the software gangbusters and keep sending us feedback like crazy on things to change. And it turns out that once we have 20 people using the software, right? So we say, okay, if that's the case, why don't just price the software so that if you come to us and you are 20 employees or more, you see that's what we're going after, 
you go ahead and um, you know sign up. So that's why we price it that like, like that. It's based on actual data. Yeah. Yeah. But also we also give people who have less than twenty employees a chance to uh, reach out and see you know because uh, we have a special pricing for them. They reach out to see if uh, if it's a good fit. You know, they can go on with this um, pricing for the smaller teams. But our focus is that twenty more twenty yeah. employees or more. And also like I've talked to customers with uh, lesser. Um, number of employees, like say 10 employees or, 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 or less. And when they cancel for some whatever reason, it's not because of the software itself, because software is always going to be easy to use, but it's more about the stage in which their company really is in. Because at that stage where they have like, you know, five employees or less, they're wearing multiple hats. And their real issue at that point is trying to drive more business, get more customers in so they yeah. can drive more business. They're not really thinking. But my argument, oh, and I'm yeah. going to argue force yeah. me process for a second. But my argument is like, well, then they need a process for selling. I mean, they need a process for, you know, getting more customers as well. well yeah, 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 yeah. So there's an argument for that. But yeah. you know, when when you're trying to figure out how to keep the lights on, you're not thinking about uh, how, you know the, the the process for something else that has nothing to do with your core focus at that point, which is. I've got to keep the lights on as a small company. I got to get more uh, business in. So their whole focus at that point is, you know, driving more uh, business. Now, on the other hand, by the time you've hired 20 people, I can wager to say that you've already figured out that engine for driving business, right? Uh, you know, and driving new uh, customers and, and stuff like that. At this point now, your whole issue is, well, we want to make sure that we're delivering the results or whatever we promise to our customers, right? be it uh, services or, 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 or products. We want to make sure we're delivering it at a, you know, a, 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 a level that we determine where we want it to be and our, our employees are doing it all the time. And so at that point, scale and operations is a an issue for you, right? And so because at this level where you have 20 or more employees, operations and scale is an issue for you. A software like Street Process, which this is our focus, becomes you know a, a thing where it, it makes sense for them. So we say, well, you know what? Price for the people you're trying to target. Price for the people that you know over the years stay longer with you. And if anybody else want to come in knowing the price, oh. well, we can have them in yeah. as well. I mean, I could see even for 10 people or five people, that's still really an amazing price point. Right. So that's why I was curious. I'm like, I, I could see him go for up to 10 and plus five dollars a month for additional users. And that still yeah. would be totally reasonable with what we see out there and how software companies charge. The other thing I want to talk about is how do people use this with um, like an Asana or mm -hmm. a ClickUp? Um, okay. How do they use Sweet Process along with their project management? OK, so basically the, the, the whole uh, first part of the problem we're solving is saying, okay, how is work done? I want to make sure that, you know, you can document procedures, processes, policies for how, you know, work is done in your company. And you can collaborate together to build those documents. But now on the other end of this uh, whole thing is, okay, let's get work done, right? So you can document a procedure for how to take orders over the phone, but now let's say customer journ uh, call calls and it's, you know, you're taking an order for John. So that's, tasks. So with Sweet Process, we combine that whole thing with the you know documentation of procedures and processes with you being able to work on tasks and assign tasks to your employees, you know, to your teams or your roles in, within your company and people can get work done. But now the thing is, they can never say, I don't know how the work is done because in order for you to assign a task to anybody in Sweet Process, it needs to be based on a underlying procedure or underlying process that you have documented because it's right there in front of them. Step one, you do this. As you're doing the thing and you're actually carrying out a task, you're seeing the instructions for it right there. You're checking it off. Now, obviously, there are people that would want to be able to use a different task management tool to get work done. Well, so be it. We have a means for them to integrate uh, with wh whatever tools they want to integrate with via our API. Or if they want to, if, if they're technical, they use the, our API with the API or the other software. Or but if they're not technical, they could use a third party tool like Zapier. And Zapier is like a, a tool that has a bunch of different, different softwares connecting together and you can use that connection, right? And so if you don't want to use a tool like Sweet Process to manage both the documentation and, the, and, and the, the tasks getting work done, then you can integrate us with other tools. But yes, the thing why I always make the argument for keeping everything in the same place, because Okay, you spend all that time doing that continuous improvement and documenting how work is done, but there's also this other part where insight is gained is when the work is being done. 
you find, oh, we documented that it should be done like this, but you know, this doesn't make sense. You know, there's some, you know, something wrong with our process right now, and I need to, uh, we need to change that. Now, if you're using a different software for the actual kind of work or getting work done, now you are depending on this employee being so proactive and all that to remember, <laughs> I mean, they're busy employees and all that, to, to, to leave that place where they're doing the work and come back into this other tool where you're documenting how work is done to let the manager know and whatever. Obviously, there will be a certain percentage of people that will do that, but you know, to be honest, the bulk of them would not. And so you lose all the insight, right? Because they are separate tools. So by having them both together while the work is being done, if there's any issue that needs to be solved or whatever, or what, anything that needs to be improved, the employee, if it's proactive, they can go ahead and even improve the underlying procedure or process uh, or that, that, that was documented. And in real time, that task they are working on gets you know, those additional steps that was improved and stuff like that. So that's why I always encourage people to, you know, do everything in one software so that that information flow back and forth uh, is much easier. But if you have to use a separate uh, task management tool, for instance, then, you know, make sure that you have that integration uh, between Sweet Process and the other tool. Yeah, I've, I've heard, the reason is I've heard people use Sweet Process a lot with maybe they like assigning certain, like they just maybe use Asana or Trello or something, and then they use it as a way to go, hey, here's when you check this off, but actually here's how to do that. And they just have like a literally a sweet process in that task for them to check off. But if mm -hmm. someone doesn't know how to do that, they can just open up the, you know, the process right there. What are some of the common integrations you see or popular integrations um, with sweet process? So we have the API, you can integrate it with most software if you're technical, uh, but if you're not, you can use, uh, you know, Zapier, like I mentioned, and Zapier has like tons yeah. of I'm software. I'm just curious, what do people use it with? Like, so I'll give you an example of, yeah. of one that uh, people have you know, told me they've done, which is actually interesting. It's like a sales call, you know, uh, not a sales call, but like someone fills out a form on their website. And so I guess that triggers some uh, lead in their CRM. And in this case, I use an example like Salesforce CRM. And now that form is only used for a specific purpose. So maybe it's like a new lead or what a new sales lead or whatever for whatever product, right? And now that because there's integration between the CRM and three process that triggers a task based on an underlying sales process of what the salesperson has to do every time a new lead comes in. And so the salesperson is in Sweet Process, going through the steps, doing all that stuff. And because they've tied Sweet Process with the CRM, all the steps and all the information they're you know, uh, doing, um, entering into the Sweet Process is also at the same time being entered into the CRM. So on the sales side, all that information for what all the tasks they have been carrying out for executing the sales is right there. So like, that's just an example of, you yeah. know, how, how you can do stuff with uh, tasks like It's interesting. Classes. I love hearing how people do this stuff because they they have figured out sophisticated ways to actually run their business efficiently. And, and the thing is, what you will find is that in a company's day-to-day, -day, more than 80% of the work is repetitive and is the same. And that is where Sweet Process comes in because when you have a repetitive structure of what you know, each of the different tasks is, how they are done, then you need a tool like Sweet Process to document those stuff. So you have it, you know, uh, and, and employees can always have it handy. And then there will be that, you know, small percent where it's like new stuff, new ideas that uh, you, you, you don't even know how it's going to be done. So it's, that's kind of more, I think that's more of a project where you can use a project management tool and go and figure it out there. But once there's a process behind it and there's a repetitive structure around it, and you need a tool like Sweet Process, which is a business process management, tool to go and you know have your business processes yeah. in there so owen what are some of your favorite software uh, outside of sweet process what are some i love calendly uh i know you do <laughs> <laughs> i've i mean seriously i've been avoiding <laughs> setting up a calendar system for six, oh, yeah. six years and then Owen is basically the one that forced me to do it, which is oh, the yeah. best thing I ever did. So anyways, <laughs> yeah. I love I love Calendly too. Yeah. I, what I, else? The back and forth uh, solves that problem. <laughs> and uh, actually, one of my favorite CRM, to, uh, to be honest, is actually HubSpot. HubSpot mm. CRM. I mean, no offense to the Salesforce lovers out there, but I cannot wrap my mind around that software. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It's, I mean, people love it. People, you know, go crazy about it. But I, I love simplicity. You know, so HubSpot is one of them for mm -hmm. me. 
you know, and you keep wondering like, how am I always on top of stuff when the, the, the things we do together? Well, I'm using, you know, stuff like CRMs, uh, HubSpot to you know, manage all that stuff, you know, and which other tools? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Stripe, I mean, it's not, you, you wouldn't really talk, say Stripe is a tool, but it's, it's more about, uh, you know, making sure that the bills get paid, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, what about for a, sa- a SaaS company? Do you recommend any, um, you know, there's a lot out there that integrate with Stripe to have recurring billing for a SaaS company. Are there any ones you've seen that you've you've liked so, out there? So we use Stripe for the entire thing. You so, do? Yes. I mean, Stripe, I mean, to be well, honest, you also have developers. Probably. Yeah, you that, probably yeah. have custom that, stuff that, going on. <laughs> that's what I was about to say. You, you, you read my mind. It's like Stripe, they're doing a good job of every day and every day trying to make it simple and simple. Right. But, you know, the beauty about Stripe is that they have, you know, a great API that is easy and uh, for these developers to do really creative things with. But now if, if you're not so savvy and you you wanted uh, some easy way to create like a subscription or whatever, there's always like Recurly is a good one, uh, you know, that you can use yeah. to create subscription and you don't even need to be, you know, technical. You probably have coded a Recurly on your back end. I mean, you probably have co- fully coded these things because that's what you use. And you, we, you know, we, we used to be uh, with yeah. Recurly for years, and yeah. then eventually we we liked it, but you know, Stripe just made better sense for us from a uh, flexible yeah. standpoint and all yeah. that. So we moved. Yeah, yeah. Any other software favorite softwares? Because you're a very uh, productive, efficient guy, so I'm sure I, I wanted uh, to hear your 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 favorites. Productive, efficient. That's a stretch. <laughs> uh, is it possible that we created a software because I'm not so productive? <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah so uh well I'm, I'm i'm trying to figure out things i use every day i mean this yeah. is not necessarily software but i'm on linkedin every day mm. linkedin is like my facebook mm-hmm. you know? so I'm, I'm on linkedin every day you know for you know making connection to uh would be uh customers and partners and all that stuff so mm-hmm. yeah i'm just looking at you know, what do i do every day and these are things that come to mind mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Last question. Oh, Cohen. one I forgot. Go ahead, go ahead. Zoom. I forgot Zoom. Yeah, so makes it easy. I remember the days when I used to uh, just go to a meeting and just to get some. I mean, I'm not trying to knock on any software, but the reality was that uh, we moved over to, to, to Zoom. It's so easy. Yeah, simplicity, you know. Yeah. I mean, and I used Slack, to Slack, re- Slack. We forgot Slack. My team, we couldn't be on doing anything without Slack. So we're always on Slack, slacking it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the things I use every day. I yeah. just come to my, yeah. No, I appreciate that. I have one last question before I ask it. Um, I do want to point people towards Sweet Process. You could check it out. Um, like I said, SWEETProcess.com. If you really want to document, get things off your plate, get things off your you know staff's plate and actually just document it so that the onboarding and everything gets done right, um, check it out. Uh, there's there's many tens of thousands of companies using Sweet Process, and uh, it will make it your life better and easier. So uh, you were saying during the pre-interview, you're going to ask me uh, the history of why. I that's about that question. <laughs> that, my last question is, um, you know, coming to the U.S. and life. What you know, what was life like? Because you grew up in Nigeria. Yeah, so I used to, I grew up in a village with lions chasing me. Before we were a lion, except in the zoo, man. <laughs> You know, before we hit record, I was like, what was life like in Nigeria? Because people have this, they they have this stereotype in their brain of what life was like in Nigeria. Mm. And and you were talking about what some people have asked you about, which is no water. We can, you know, eat. Not That's a craziness. Nah, I mean, (laughs) that's a whole different topic. But I just want it it was funny when you asked me that question. So, yeah. (laughs) Ah. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> so, so what was life like in nigeria yeah so uh i mean life was uh do you way, still have family there oh yeah i mean you do 
I mean, most Nigerians, you 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 have family, and you know you you have that strong connection. That even though you're not even in Nigeria, you're still in Nigeria because it doesn't leave you. Because that's how strong the connection is. Uh, and the beauty about the whole thing is it takes uh, the family structure of you know raising you. I mean, like I am where I am today because of all the different inputs, and no matter how little it is, of all the different people, you know, family members and even non-family members have you know put in my life to, to, to get where I am right now. So uh, we have that, you know, structure, that strong family bond in Nigeria, you know, uh, you know, even your, your neighbors just catch you doing something wrong, go snitch on you and then <laughs> they're all like, and tell your parents, you know, so that's how, that's how we live, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the way, but growing up, um, my dad uh, was an entrepreneur himself. Right. And so, uh, my mom, to an extent, uh, was an entrepreneur, and also she had, you know, uh, working as a, a teacher as well. But a lot of the the work ethic that I have today was from learning from, uh, you know, both of them, you know, impacting on me on you know how, uh, you know, you don't get to anywhere you want to get to in life without you know putting the effort into uh, achieving it. And my dad would tell me how lucky I, I I was, you know, growing up because he came, you know. Maybe some of the stories a little bit embellished, but uh, you know he came from you know uh, a much poor background than me, and he would say, "Okay, I, I, when I was growing up, I would have to walk miles to go fetch water and stuff like, you know." But all the like I'm saying, uh, some of the stories might be embellished, but the whole goal is to let you understand that you don't take for granted where you are right now, know where you came from, so that you know you keep that journey to get to the next level, and you know the whole thing is try to carry as many of people as with you so that the next level you go, we're going with you and, you know, uh, stay grounded. It's, it's basically, uh, you know, but my dad was an entrepreneur and my mom as well. And, you know, that whole love and caring and uh, strong bond, you know, that is from my mom, you know, the strong foundation of, you know, it's all about the family. So, yeah, I mean, that's the way life was and eventually uh, graduated high school, college, and decided that, you know, I had to, uh, I had to make the decision. My mom was like, you know, you're coming to the U.S. to study, and, you know, came here. This was uh, 2002, and, you know, eventually came here, started studying computer science, and after, uh, you know, I met my wife in uh, in college, and so, hey, mm. at that point, you know, I got stuck. You got stuck. <laughs> You're here. <laughs> um, yeah, so which is a good thing. So like I said, the, the you know, even though I'm not back home, home is always connected with me and to me. So yeah. Yeah. Owen, I want to be the yeah. first one to thank you. I love that you tell this story and um, everyone should check out sweetprocess.com. Thanks yeah. so much, everyone. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other if you find the same right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand 